It's YouTube Hunters. Brad could speak to you. So I had a request from the immortal Diablo85 himself to do a step-by-step -step on how I built Burstook, which was kind of my signature prop of 2012. Burstook is the evil god of the forest in Wendish mythology, and I actually started building him before I knew what he was going to be, or even what my backstory was, so I kind of wrote the backstory around them worshipping this demon god. Now, I don't have pictures of the entire process. Unfortunately, I have way more of the building of the head which is kind of sculpture stuff that I've gone over. Unfortunately, I am missing a large chunk of pictures uh, in the build, but I'll try and talk about as much as possible and be as brief as possible. And that's very hard for me. Very hard. Okay, so I started off with one of these typical styrofoam heads, a wig head that you can find all over. I severed the jaw and took out sort of the eye section, started carving into the shape, and uh, basically had a look at it and figured out kind of the general pose that I wanted to do. Then I took this large uh, block of styrofoam that I bought at the art store, I cut it in half, and I cut uh, these horn shapes out of them. I figured out where they would fit in the head as well. I like using styrofoam in this situation because it's very light and it's very strong. So once I had kind of built it all up into sort of a general plan using only styrofoam, I went to work with aluminum foil and tape. So I basically start building up in foil and uh, secure that down with tape and I built it up kind of patiently and just tried to figure out where I wanted to go. Then I extended the jaw using foil and tape and then fed a wire all the way around the jaw and then into the side of the skull which you can just barely see there and fed the wire in quite deep. I just used, you know, armature wire from sc for sculpture. And once I had kind of built up the shape I wanted, I tested out uh, where I w wanted teeth. This was the first time I actually made my own teeth and I'm not really happy with the way they came out but I may replace them for this year. Then I went to set to work on epoxy sculpt. I had uh, basically used um, ping pong balls in the eyes and um, started working detail up with epoxy sculpt onto the face. Um, I've gone over how that's done many times, so I won't go into it a whole lot more here. I built a uh, tongue out of DOS air dry clay and I built uh, ears out of Sculpey 3. Uh, I'm not recommending those materials necessarily in those situations just what I happened to do because I wanted to play with uh, some different materials and learn how they worked. Now I wanted a different texture on the horns so I went to work with claycrete uh, paper paper mache which is basically you know ground up paper in the solution so all you do is add water. This stuff takes forever to dry you know I probably won't use it ever again but it created a really nice texture here, here on the horns. Built more Sculpey up around the edges to create kind of that uh, fold of skin that wraps around the horn. Then I gave him an initial paint. Um, I tried using the black light paint that I had available to me at the time. And um, since uh, then I put this prop away for a long period of time. And then closer to Halloween, I, I started building up the body. And that's when I decided to switch to wildfire paints because they're way better than the typical uh, UV paints that you that you buy in an art store. Now, Burstook was planned not just to be the prop itself, but sort of a whole set piece. So you may have seen in sort of the video, I also had these mustard gas containers uh, beside him, which refers back to my backstory in the World War I tie-in. These were just canisters I found by a railroad that I just painted up with UV paint and stenciled on the letters. And then I also took a spirit Halloween zombie baby and found a baby gas mask at the local military surplus store and fed some LEDs um, inside along with some uh, um, polyester batting to diffuse the light so that he had these nice glowing eyes where you can't see a single source of light. You can't see the LED itself, but you see this, this very nice diffuse glow. And I also got him a little dress that I found. It's like a baptism gown that I found at a, little, um, at a local thrift shop, which is UV reactive as well. I also just took a bunch of uh, dollar store skulls and very quickly attached, uh, reattached their jaws and primed them. And then I eventually, um, treated them with uh, wildfire paint and then painted all kinds of uh, runey kind of looking symbols on them in non-reactive paint just so that they would stand out as negative contrast in the final piece. I also got all these um, trees just by searching really hard and asking around on Facebook. I found these fake trees. Uh, a friend of mine um, actually was giving them away. And they were perfect for my haunt and luckily some of the leaves actually lit up and under the UV light which was also really cool 
to make my forest scene. I also made a bunch of PVC candles to go in the scene and to go throughout the whole haunted house. Then I took these uh, cable spools and um, basically made a paper mache treatment around them to make it look like a tree stump which sat beside Burstook on his chair. And here he is here on his chair. This is a chair that my brother and I found at a garage sale uh, that some guy had made to put in his garden a long time ago. And um, I took a skid, cut it in half, mounted the seat to that, and uh, that's where Burst Duke sat, and all the other pieces were sort of mounted to that same skid, just so that he'd be closer to eye level. So as for the body himself, unfortunately that's the kind of thing I don't have a lot of pictures of. I got a Spider Hill Prop Works uh, set of uh, PVC joints from Spider Hill Prop Works, and um, that's how I positioned the body. Uh, Previously when I had made Timmy, I had just done a bunch of um, playing around with PVC to kind of get the bends that I wanted, but the Spider Hill Prop Works uh, kit obviously make things, makes things a whole lot easier. I also built up his hands using a method that uh, I can't remember where I first saw it, so I apologize whoever I stole this from, but basically I just take uh, pieces of cardboard about the size of my palm and then I cut sections of poly, uh, poly tubing. Uh, to represent the individual links of fingers and I run armature wire through them, put a little dab of hot glue into the ends of each piece to kind of uh, freeze the wire in there and then you can bend and position them. And then I just hot glue the remaining wire down onto the palm and then add another piece of cardboard to the top end and then I like um, actually um, drilling through and using nuts and washers and bolts to connect uh, steel wire not or very heavy gauge aluminum wire um, to the wrist, do the same thing on the wrist by using washers and washers and, and uh, nuts and bolts to actually create a very strong wrist. What I basically do is take the end of the PVC pipe uh, where I want the uh, wrist to connect and I heat gun it to hell and then stick it in a clamp so that it becomes flat and then I can just drill a hole through it and then run my bolt through there and um, you get a positionable wrist that's still quite strong because you're using steel wire. For feet, um, Feet are a pain in the ass to make sometimes. Um, I heard Alan Hopps say the same thing one time and I totally agree. So all I did is I found that the, these crocs, which I was actually able to drill a hole through and, um, and, and do the same trick I had done on the wrists with steel wire to uh, connect them to the ends of the feet and then I basically just uh, used plastic and the heat gun to sh uh, shrink wrap around all that so that I had uh, feet that were positionable and didn't take a whole lot of work. So once I had kind of built them up, I. Uh, I did a combination of paper mache around the parts that uh, I thought looked um, needed to look better because pa paper mache to me is a slightly more attractive option. And then I used heat gun and, and, and plastic wrap around the areas that are hard to cover, like around the pelvis and around the ribs and things like that. Also parts which I knew I would later clothe. Um, but I still like to finish the whole prop underneath just because I'm, I guess I have OCD or something. Uh, wherever the elbows and knees, the joints where I still wanted access to those things, I stole a trick from um, Craig Schreiber, who I think I got the other thing about the wrists or the hands from as well. Cut a bunch of holes into some cotton t-shirt kind of material and just kind of dipped all that in latex and wrapped them around the joints, but all the different holes that were left in the latex allowed me access to reach, uh, you know, to reach into those nuts and, and loosen them and if I wanted to reposition first Duke at any point. As far as the costume is concerned, I used fake fur around the shoulders. That chest piece, I'd love to say that I made it, but was actually just a lucky find at a thrift store. I did make the leather straps that hold that on and then that um, mask that's kind of he's wearing as a necklace around his neck is something I actually made out of epoxy sculpt at one point. Now as far as the paint job is concerned, I painted the whole thing kind of an indigo blue and then I used um, wildfire UV reactive paint. This stuff is very, very expensive. So what I did is I just dry brushed it kind of all over. And then I found the prop had kind of a too, too uniform a color. So I just used the cheaper spirit paints, the glow in the dark paints, to dry brush on top of that slightly to give a bit of a tinge of color to the different areas. Um, but most of the brightness comes from the wildfire underneath. So once Burstook was navigated into position within the haunt, unfortunately we only had kind of an evening to decorate the rest of the scene around him. So you know there was a smoke machine in there, uh, we sprayed webs, all UV reactive webs, all over the, uh, the, the, the room that he was in. And, and Burstook just was a distraction 
in the end for uh, our scare actor who was in a ghillie suit behind all these trees. And again, to me, I have so many friends who take part in the hunt. They're they're the focus of the show. Um, you know, I make all these pieces and stuff. And but to me, you know, props are a distraction so that the actors can get a scare. So that's what Bruce Duke was, and that's what he'll be this year too. Um, I'm going to put him into this new scene that I started sketching out last night, which will be from the garage section of the haunt. And the reason be, uh, for that is, is that I want to take more time to decorate the scene around Burstook this year. I spent enough time on him uh, himself uh, last year, but the room around him was kind of plain Jane in my opinion. So the garage portion of our haunt, which is um, inside and warm and dry, um, I, I have you know weeks to work on um, that the painting of that and making um, the background look really nice as opposed to the tent portion of our haunt which is always kind of thrown together at the last minute because we rent that tent so you know it only comes a few days before Halloween that's for Stuke. I, I may completely repaint him this year I'm almost definitely gonna redo his teeth I like him he was a learning process for me so hopefully you know, you can learn a thing or two from uh, this tutorial. There's things I look at about him now that I'm like, yeah, I would have done that differently, but hey man, it's just Halloween, right? Let's have fun and build monsters. So that's it. Signing off. This was a long one. Sorry. From me to you, happy haunting.